I will start to do the maybe one thing that uh, meant both tradition wise and improvisation, the meaning, the core for me. Uh, so I will do some herding call. Uh, uh, yeah, and you have to imagine the animal out in the forest. So you can close your eyes if you want to. to this conversation with a big overall uh, theme, uh, which is beautiful but yet quite general and, and abstract. Uh, and it says, is there a common ground, a common language from where we can speak about music beyond genres and regions, more or less. Uh, we don't really expect you to have the one sentence answer on that, but we would very much like to reflect upon it together. Uh, and I think uh, one common thing uh, here, which is natural to start with, is uh, the voice. Uh, you have a voice too. Uh, I mean, and I think your instruments are also voices. Uh, but now, very concretely, we have uh, vocal artists, uh, which is quite unifying. And the common thing with you is that, uh, or most of you, is that you have experimented uh, within very different techniques. Uh, and I'm very curious to know more about that, how it influences you when you swap genre. Um, what does it, how does it influence your voice uh, or your expression uh, or your technique? Uh, it's a big uh, a discussion about the hen and the egg. Uh, but I would, I would like to start with Elsa because I can imagine that theatre voices have a lot of long workshops um, within each new piece because I, I guess many of the repertoire that you are performing will demand approaching just the fact of singing uh, from scratch or that was many questions in one <laughs> um, I think if, if I started from where my thoughts went first when I was going to participate in this was um, sort of the humming and hawing about do we have a Nordic sound, do we have a Nordic approach. Um, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But, but it sort of is relevant for how I think all of my approach to music. That there is, I think, maybe somewhere a deep inner core to what you do as a performer. I think maybe in the Nordic countries we have sort of a, a melancholy and darkness and focus on deep matters and it's okay. It's okay to go a little dark. Then you also appreciate the light on the other side. But this kind of core thinking also is important for me when I sing and for our ensemble when we sing. We are very different people. We come with 
very different approaches. I mean, one is a Wagnerian mezzo. I would say I'm a Baroque soprano. We have a Mozart bass, and, and we have a very, very light Renaissance tenor. That's the basic lineup. But we come with the ambition of doing something together. Sometimes we're fortunate enough to have a score where one of our fantastic composers has written down their intention as best they could. And we often have the chance to work with the composers as well for them to explain their intentions further. But the trust in a common goal and a common outset makes us, I think, able to do pretty much anything. But it's the centeredness on the trust in the group and your technique, because then you can use your voice for anything. You, you don't need to uh, think, I'm now singing like Mozart or like Wagner. I'm singing like me, but approaching something that I think is loyal to the material I have. I just realized that we have the Nordic label in, in our education, because I've grown up with Arne Mellnes Agleta. And that's, perhaps, you all know it. No? What? <laughs> no! Arne Mellnes Agleta. The all kinder choir, children's choirs sang it in 70s, 80s in Finland. Agleta. That was the basic repertoire. And with the, the, I think the, the choir is the thing, the children choirs, what they are singing. And, 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 and I don't know any other pieces of Arne Melnes than Aglepta. You don't know Aglepta? I know Arne Melnes, but I don't know Aglepta. But you know, yeah. So, so that was the basic repertoire between, between basic uh, harmonic things. So, so it's, 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 it's the, 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 it's the normality of using how, how to use voice is normal. It's normality to grow up to that normality. And I can use my voice how, what, what in, in any, whatever kind of technique, it's normal. I mean, that's, that's maybe Nordic then. I mean, yeah. So, so one common ground is, is the repertoire and, and the vocal sound that comes with it. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Um, the, the thing that surrounds you affects you. And uh, it, uh, that means that the surrounding is different for all of us. Yeah. But we all know trees. We all know mountains. We all know rivers. We all know animals and human beings. So I think um, for, for me as a... As a uh, performer. performer. <laughs> because you asked, how does it affect you, you mm -hmm. to go like this in? So I just grabbed the microphone here. <laughs> but but uh, for me, the root is folk music. But with my, I have this, what do you say when you have the wanderer stick, when you go, go with it? This is my folk music. But I am, of course, affected by the surroundings, different surroundings, musical surroundings. If I go with my folk music, do you say stick or, well, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, um, to the traditional uh, yeah, mountain farm, where I have called for cows so many times, then, I'm affected by nature and animal. But if I go to this maybe fashion, a jazz club, yeah, of course, and work with improvisation and music, jazz musicians, it's still me. I'm, I'm holding my stick, but I'm like uh, entering a new country. It's like, it, it's different colors to your yeah. own musicality. It makes sense. And I think, that you, you grow up with these children, uh, choir singing, yeah. and, and maybe, maybe more of you did that, but we have all different, but we are approaching a core 
that can really lead us and comfort us in different musical situations and expand. Yes. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> no, I, I grew up uh, playing accordion because my father played, his father played, and his father played again. My mother's father played. He has seven brothers play accordion, and the father of those guys played accordion. I didn't really have a choice when I was a kid. And then we, I, I worked nine to five, start, starting nine in the evening, playing to five in the morning from when I was nine years old in weddings. So my first memories are like drunk old people saying, yeah, you play that thing too fast, I'll beat your face, you know? <laughs> so so that's, that's my childhood, but then I discovered, uh, my, my grandpa, he, he liked gypsy music, and my father liked gypsy music, and I loved gypsy music. So I went to Bulgaria when I was 19 years, and I fell in love with that music and, and the Romanian music, and it changed my life. So I don't know, but maybe it's genetic. We will find out next week. <laughs> and and do, do people, are you, are you met with people um, labeling you as a Nordic, a specific Nordic um, musician? I don't think so. I mean, I grew up playing what we called folk music in Norway, but you know, really it was German music, like Rheinländer and Schottis, you know. It's, we think it's from Norway, I thought, but then I read, oh, it's from Germany, it's from Sweden, it's from Poland, you know. I don't know. I, I'm more of a European musician, I think, because I grew, grew up playing classical music and folk music and I also studied jazz but I'm more into the, the, the roots of the European music and to bring back improvisation into the European music. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, till I die. <laughs> Thank you, please, please do that. Um, uh, Thorgeir, I, I have uh, this small anecdote uh, speaking about Nordic music and the identity uh, I was uh, working within the Nordic Contemporary Collaboration uh, for many years and I had brought a delegation of international festival directors and composers and uh, intelligent people, academics, uh, to Iceland for a festival. And we had been discussing what is Nordic music uh, up and down and I was about to throw up because it became so... Um, Forced, uh, because I, I know what you mean when you tell we, we understand intuitively what we mean, and it, perhaps it's uh, attitude more than a concrete yeah. thing, because we're all individualists, um, and uh, we have tried to analyze all the concerts with lots of very complex uh, contemporary score music, and to be honest, they were all very very different. So perhaps the Nordic label was that we were very individual. Uh, and they became more and more confused and uh, they drank more and more and uh, it was a very nice uh, festival but at some point we, we came into a church and we heard your choir Hamravid uh, and uh, there was um, revelation uh, among the delegates uh, some started to cry some just you know had a big sigh and there was no more to say uh, because they said like there you go, why make things difficult? Because the expression of your work is so pure. It doesn't seek to explain anything. Uh, and, and people seem so happy because you sort of confirmed um, the pureness uh, of what we would like to have the Nordic sound to be. But, but, but tell me, uh, how do you create this sound? Is it, they're young voices, but they, sing without, they sing uh, by memory, uh, so it's very direct and a very strong impression when a church is filled with all these young people singing directly to you. Uh, but your voice is not there, so it goes through them. How do you work with them? How do you make them unified in this? Of course, there is no exact answer to such a wide question and very philosophical. But I have often, very, very often been asked, where do you get this sound from? Why is the sound of your choir? And it's always a different choir. Always a different choir. I don't have any explanation, not a logical one or uh, something which I've been experienced on, or anything of that sort. I say, that is the way friendship 
and love sin. <laughs> that is some human secret behind it. It is a love of these young people between all of us. It is a sincerity. There is nobody trying to push out himself or be on a higher level or a step in the in the in the in the many steps up to something high and famous. It's sincerity, it's honesty. And think about these hundreds and thousands of young people. Uh, I have been so fortunate and I will be grateful to my last day for all these friends. <laughs> Even here in this dark uh, auditorium. Um, I find them everywhere. I travel a lot and I find them here and there. And it is not me. It is something behind it and it is their work together that makes it a, a wonderful sound. <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree with the honesty and the sincerity, and that's the most important <clears throat> thing for me in improvising. Mm. It has to come from your your whole system, like not just the mind or not just the body, but it's it's something you experience, and that's why I think I became an improviser because it you know it helps me with the rest of the things in my life. Mm. So, so if I get to practice for 90 minutes every morning, I'm happy the rest mm. of the day. Right. <laughs> so. But when we are talking about the Nordic sound, whatever it could be or is, um, uh, now you mentioned being an improviser, but uh, do you also have a jazz background? More yeah, I, jazz I, I, yeah, I I started as a classical player, and then I when I kind of found out that I love improvising, then I decided to get a jazz education because because that was maybe the closest thing that I was looking for. But I don't consider myself as a pure jazz musician. Uh, I I find it very difficult to define my own work. I think that's very usual for any artist. Uh, it's also difficult to put a Nordic label to, to the music, but there must be something, I guess. I'm, I'm, I live in one of the Nordic countries and I'm lucky for that. Uh, you know, One thing that we all hopefully have in common, that we live in safety and, and we, we get to explore our inner worlds and express that. So, so that's not maybe happening all over the world. And and uh, that at least is, and and we are also a very open society. So 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 there's plenty of uh, variety in our expression as well because everything is sort of allowed and we are and and accepted accepted. So I think that's that's uh, that's one key thing maybe. I don't know if it translates into any dif any any particular sound or. Uh, tonal progressions, you know, but but uh, yeah. No, but it's a it's a very important perspective, I think, yeah. in all those discussions about what it can mean. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, nonetheless, uh, when I hear your music, uh, I could imagine that uh, a lot of writers and critics might mention your Nordic sound. Yeah, it could be. I mean, I'm, I'm a slow person, and in, 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 in jazz, <laughs> in jazz music, you know, often like, like uh, long notes and and silent <laughs> stuff is definitely often, Nordic. Yeah, it, it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> Nordic. I mean, if that translates, yeah, then then yeah, but but uh, yeah, yeah, because that comes naturally from me. Like I like to just breathe once and then like wait for the silence and then play something else, so. No, but I'm, I'm thinking, Evo, you are, you are um, uh, through the recent years, um, Nordic has reached new levels as a brand, uh, Nordic Noir, Nordic Life, all this, and, and um, some of your music, not all of your music, but, but some of your music uh, is 
namely identifying what like the global commercial and cultural industry would name as as typical Nordic. Uh, how conscious have you been in that in that development? Because your foundation is also, as I experience it, uh, folk music or something I would associate with um, at least the singing uh, close to what you do, Lena. And uh, when I heard you first time, I was thinking about Mari Boyne, uh, which is Sami, but still, so this whole Nordic area. Uh, what are your reflections on that? Yeah, well, I think that, yes, I'd say I come from the folk music like family because I grew up in the Faroe Islands and I used to sing with my great-grandfather and we, I, would, I was always inspired by Faroese traditional music, which is a cappella singing. And uh, that was always like the... That kind of lit the fire, my, my music, the fire of my creative uh, soul, I think. And from there, my journey kind of started. And I think I've been very experimental in, uh, on my journey with, uh, with trying out uh, different uh, approaches to creating music and how it can sound. Uh, I've been quite curious about what a voice the human voice, what can it do? It, it, it's such a powerful uh, instrument. Um, and uh, and I think that I've traveled like through pop and rock and jazz, classical, whatever, but, but I've always felt very connected to the, the core, which is that, um, that where it all started for me. So somehow the Faroese folk music, maybe, always finds a way into whatever I create. I'm not so conscious about it though. I don't think, oh, now I'm gonna do something that sounds really Nordic. <laughs> I think it's just something like you mentioned, Lena, and, and also you, it's just something that is there. Uh, a core of some sort, a sound, a mood. And uh, it's a bit melancholic, yes. But uh, when I create stuff, I try not to be too conscious about what it should be, you know. But in my encounter with your music, it's very much also the imagery that we have these sagas and heroic poems from all of our history. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and somehow I feel often that that connects. You, you know what I'm talking about if I mention such and such. And very much, I mean, I hear your music very much as almost an echo of what could have been a thousand years ago. I, oh, I, I yeah, love the images and, and the sound of the, the waves and the wind and this kind of, there, there is a whole uh, like dictionary of natural elements very much in your music. But, but very much sense. with reference to sagas and things. Yeah, I think that makes sense. It does. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm very inspired by the drama of our history and uh, the dramatic uh, landscapes and uh, nature. Of course, is always mm. my main mm. uh, power source, the place I I go back to to kind of reconnect. And I think that's if I try and think about what made me want to sing from when I was a little girl. That is, it, it's nature. It's, it's all the, it's the mystery of just being a little living thing on this earth. And nature is so powerful around you and you need to express yourself. Mm. And I remember walking home from school, just having this need to um, write songs and go somewhere and sing. But uh, everybody has spoken so wisely. So, so, um, <laughs> Growing up, then again, there were, there were, uh, my, my influences were totally from, from um, rock music, really. And, and, uh, but I can remember from school singing, for example, Horka Lawton and such. And later on, when I started, started composing music and, and providing music for film, I've been once, once or twice asked to provide, make it sound Nordic. And then you have to, to check. Uh, Ask yourself, what is the Nordic? Mm. So, so I, I have a 
image of what it should sound like. But mm. well, there, there again you have the uh, the, the elements that sur that uh, surround you, both, both the physical and, and like uh, Werner said that we 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 are very lucky to to live here. In, 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 by, by way we, we can uh, make what music we, we we want to make mm. and and uh, of course growing up on an island I, I guess you could find certain words more often than, than others um, I'm, at the moment I'm, I'm, I'm setting music to a couple of uh, all on the islands uh, they will be hundreds uh, this year so there's a, a big jubilee. <coughs> going on all year and, and I'm, at the moment I'm setting, setting music to uh, 20 something poems written throughout the all and Islands literature history and um, uh, there's a lot of sea.
you know, in the letter you sent to us, or you sent to us, before this pre-event, uh, even uh, this happening here, uh, the main question seemed to be what we think about the Nordic communication, the Nordic collaboration, and also in music. And it has not been so any words about that here today. We have been speaking about the Nordic sounds, and not all of us mentioned much about it, but probably we all have a lot to say about the Nordic sound. Perhaps we experience it most who live in the far, far north, under this big, big blue sky, and the daylight all night, and the dark winters, and it was meant with the darkness, which also affects our music. But uh, I wanted to mention here, because I have lived long days and many, uh, this collaboration in music, which I think has given us musicians in the North, North, Nordic countries many, many opportunities. And as a music educator also, for my young students through the years, so many of them are seated here, uh, even two composers now living in, in, in Copenhagen, and several of them are here. This own Nordisk uh, music, which makes it possible for young Nordic composers to uh, have the opportunity to uh, have their works performed, and that is a great challenge for a young musician. And it makes uh, them look forward to go and keep going on the way to the musical Parnassus. Mm. And it's very important. Then we have, of course, like was mentioned here in the very beginning, um, the Nordic Music Days, which is a great event in the countries. And uh, the, in choral music, we have the Nurklang, and that also gives you opportunity, not least for the people from the smaller countries in the north, north, and from the people out in the, the other bigger countries who live outside of the capitals or whatever, uh, to bring their choir music and their choirs to this Nordic festival. Etc. Etc. We have the BNL for uh, young Nordic soloists for many years, and that was really bringing up the great stars from soloists coming up through the years. I hope certainly that this part of the Nordic culture can flourish and bloom in the future. And I think this, this Nordic collaboration, it can also look in so many different ways. It's, it's so true that we all have this heart and sincere uh, hope that we can still always express ourselves and trying to communicate with everyone out there. That's that's our main thing. But I, I think also in folk music, I mean, there are no borders, actually, as in any kind of music. But in folk music, it, they some people try to force the music into borders. That's completely bullshit. Uh, because music, music and Musicians, singers have always moved. Uh, I think uh, there are many um, elements here that we could continue to discuss and it feels a bit frustrating and I think also I would have loved it to be in Nordic languages. Uh, but at least we have enjoyed the different accents, which is already um, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic to hear. And I, I certainly, uh, this is an artistic talk, and, but, but it can 
and, and should perhaps also sometimes uh, involve into something political. I, I can only agree with you uh, about uh, the importance more than ever of regional and especially the Nordic region uh, collaboration because our opportunities are so wonderful. And this is my political statement is that we know now that there is suggested uh, a cut of 25% of the cultural budgets of the Nordic collaboration, which is really, really sad because of course, they're, they're pushing that over to the big climate um, enforcement, which is also important, but in all collaboration, I think we can at least agree that it starts with common language, common trusts, that we know each other. And to get to know each other, we need to play each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's very sad if we lose this uh, informal family that is always existing and that always exists and at its best, mm -hmm. perhaps. Uh, where you play together. Uh, but I would have loved to continue to hear about languages and accents and, and, uh, and your music, but I think uh, that the time is, is up and that we will hear the um, hidden treasures of the Bulgarian roots in the Nordic music. <laughs> 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 or what you choose to serve. Uh, Stian?